well hello hello it's Kat here welcome back to my channel so I've just got a quick project that hopefully we can uh, finish fairly quickly today I am in the process of fussy cutting out some labels and I've I've got the large file folder ephemera holders um, and I've been watching a few videos, a few YouTubers, and they're all making comments that they are finding them too big to handle on the desk, and I completely agree. So I've been making some small little um, ephemera file folders. This is a project, a Halloween project I'm currently working on, and I'm finding it really good for all my little bit. That one's not. That one's I just popped in there. But um, I'm finding them really, really handy to just hold all my little fussy cut bits out. So I want to make a few more because at the moment I'm also fussy cutting out some labels. I've got all of these labels in here. And I think that whilst it's okay you know I can sort of rifle through um, I would kind of like to keep creator by creator together so um, I have decided I'm going to make some more and I'm going to separate out my labels into these little file folders and I'm going to do one for for example labels and then I'm going to do one for flowers and one for mushrooms and one for birds you you get the idea so um, inspiration is drawn from this little ephemera file folder I made it and I sold a few in my Etsy shop but um, they take a little bit of time to make and they're okay if I make them in advance but um, see I've kept this one because I've always liked the prototype for these so I think I will make these down the track again but I will the, this is the sort of thing I'll tuck into another journal so that's the inspiration I got because it's a lovely size and it's a very solid um, little file folder in fact one lady ordered one of these and I believe it was shipped over to America and she um, contacted me on Instagram and she said she was very impressed with the quality and how well it was made so um, thank you very much for that and I'm going to make it in a similar way so what I used was a brown paper bag you can see that I had them ready to go because I've got a few things inside that I was filling them up with um, but this is just a plain lunch bag from Coles or Woolworths I think I would have bought this from Coles and the measurement is in centimeters it is 20 um, well, 24 or 26 with that little serrated edge and then across it is 20 centimeters so I'm gonna try and remember how I made it <laughs> I did um, start writing instructions down but um, then I sort of made a few of them and I thought oh I, I kind of know how to make them but it's been a while so I have kind of forgotten so I do know I had a lunch bag Paper, brown paper bag I also had these craft brown envelopes so you can use any envelope um, I just had these and I liked them this is my little prototype I was trying to remember when I was folding so um, these envelopes um, but as I say you could have any size envelope you would just need to just adjust your measurements but just in case these are 16 centimeters by about 11 and a half say 11 and three and a half millimeter or in inches this is a six probably a little bit six and a quarter just a little bit over six and a quarter and this is just a little bit under four and a half inches so what we're going to need is four of these okay put that aside now I was using a digi kit and I will link the digi kit 
down below if you're interested. Um, I just liked the lavender flower pattern on it. And I've resized these down to suit my envelope. But you can have whatever background you want. Like for example, this one here, and I, I wouldn't mind um, doing more like this. Um, if I take, let me have a look. Like this one here, you can see, I just collaged on just bo old book pages. So you could literally do that. You could literally take um, your envelope and you could just collage with some old book pages. Just be careful that you are very careful with um, gluing down your edges because once we um, put our little pieces of, um, you know, tracing paper down or vellum, whatever you choose to use, uh, you just don't want to catch when you want to put something in. You don't want to, um, if, you're, if you're using book pages, you, you know, you want a smooth surface. So you just need to be careful that uh, you do glue that down. But um, I had already had these sized. Um, so I'm going to stick with these. Um, so what I did was I, and because I'm slightly modifying the way that I've made, that I'm making this, I didn't quite have enough panels so um, I've got four panels and then I have these just a coordinating paper uh, but then I found these book pages here which I thought would would go nicely in particular I'm probably going to use um, something like that I'll probably just use those okay so this one here is the cover and this is the inside. Now, I've got some Craft Brown um, sort of damask pattern. It's Kaiser Craft. And some of these bigger patterns I don't really like. So I like to use the back. Um, so I may use these. And I would use these, you know, if you can imagine the little booklet, um, I'll probably cover that inside so that's why I've got these I haven't cut these down as yet and uh, I've just got a spare piece of paper just in case I need to get some more paper so um, just to recap quickly you'll need brown paper bag or a paper bag doesn't have to be brown just a paper bag and just choose how you want to decorate the inside um, I would suggest that you do because what we're going to do is we're going to open up our flaps and we're going to um, glue these down and place them inside each other like that. So then you get this um, book, but you know, you're going to want to cover that over. Like that side is fine like you wouldn't have to cover that one over but you might want to cover that one over so it's completely up to you how you want to do that <laughs> so um that's that and then for the um actual little um pockets i've got some um, tracing paper i've also got some vellum paper so i tend to use scraps so i, I keep my long scraps like this and uh, or I have actually got some leftover strips of acetate you could use acetate if you've got that you could use um, you know your cellophane paper you could use that if you want I think the trick is when you use your file folder for example this one here i've got another one here i think you just want to be careful how you pull things in and out i was overloading mine and then trying to get things out and i was tearing them so i think the trick is to have a lot of these and to not stuff too much inside your pockets 
and then I think but these are these are all well made and I'm going to be stitching around the edges and let's get into it <laughs> okay so the first thing I want to do is clear my workspace and grab my paper bag now I've got some art glitter glue and I'm just gonna glue this little top bit shut like so and I'm trying to remember what I did so if we bring my prototype so I don't think I folded it up I mean I could have but I don't think I did so I'm thinking I must have um, I must have cut it so I'm gonna take um, so really I just want to use my my envelope so whatever size envelope you're using and whatever size bag you're using you want to just pretty much like when you fold it in half and I think this is why I like these bags because when I folded them in half they were the perfect size for this envelope so all I need to really do is make a mark well pretty much where that that seam line I don't know if you can see in the light but there's like a little seam line there so I'm just going to cut that down Oops. Now I'm not even going to bother getting the cutter out for this so let me just double check measure twice cut once yeah so I'm just going to follow that little line there and I'm just going to cut that off So now I've got this. Now let's just make sure we fold this and everything is lined up. All right, so this is where um, this here slips over here. And now I must have. Uh, I must have torn that in half and I'm going to because um, I want that a bit more centered so I'm just working on another project so I've got all these little bits just slightly out of camera okay so I'm just going to tear this down so now what I can do is I can um, just thinking I might fold that just because I've got that little crease there I think I might fold it this way okay so I can put my front there like so and then I've got a nice little border so I'm just going to get some um, glue I've done a very good job of cleaning up and I'm going to try some new new glue this study mate glue okay so I should get a glue book out for this shouldn't I I like it because um, well I've always used a blue a blue glue but apparently this one um, I got this from uh, Corinne from um, treasured i really do need to look up the name of her channel because i keep forgetting the full name this is the glue that she used and she's an australian youtuber so um i asked her where she got it from and she said just from office works but she was gluing down fabric so i thought oh i'll have to give that a go now i'm not so worried about these edges because i'm going to end up stitching this but um 
I might just do run a little bit of art art glitter glue there just on the edges just to catch those just a little bit better okay how is everybody today I hope you're doing well I know that there's some um, storms in Florida at the moment so I'm hoping that everybody is okay and staying safe we'll be coming into our bushfire season soon oh, this is not working <laughs> Uh, we will be coming into our bushfire season soon, so mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the weather is mild at the moment. We had some lovely warmer days. There we go, that's working. We had some lovely warmer days here in Perth, um, but it's cooled, it cooled down again today and it's going to be a little bit cooler over the next few days, so that's nice. But I know that once December hits, it's probably going to be really, really hot. That's what happened last summer. As soon as December hit, I might just get a glue book for this. Yeah, as soon as December hit, it just got really hot and it pretty much stayed like that until March. It was very, very uncomfortable. So I am imagining we are going to have the same again. This summer, the weather patterns just seem to have changed. So we've got air conditioning. Uh, which you know in the southern hemisphere our cooling is more is very important to us and whereas I suppose in the northern hemisphere it would be the heating your heating systems would be very important to you but here it's our cooling system so we we got some um, solar panels a couple of um, years ago and I'm so glad because that has made all the difference to our power bills okay so that's that little bit done now this is where I want to um, now before I step ahead too quickly I want to now do my insert so I just move that over there okay so that's my cover there so let's glue these down. So this is where I would recommend something a little bit stronger and something that grips fairly quickly. So I'll just run a bead of art glitter glue down. And so we're going to be gluing over these anyway, but just um, line everything up. Okay, like line your creases up and just glue that little envelope flap down as well as you can. Um, this one on the inside, but that doesn't matter. We can just come over here and we can just run our glue along here. Nice simple project. And you can hand stitch these in, but I'm going to machine stitch this. So, uh, but yeah, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can hand stitch these. Okay, so that is our first, our first insert done. So just um, get my bone folder out. So just uh, crease these lines, like just make sure everything lines up nicely and just fold everything down, just make your crease. Okay, so that's that, might just crease this one as well. Now if you wanted to, you could ink the edges. Um, I'm probably not going to bother. I thought I had that upside down for a minute. Okay, so that's our first insert. So that goes in like so. And now we'll do the second insert. 
so just tuck that in And just make sure everything's lined up nicely. So that's flush, that's flush. And just make sure that you've pushed that in enough. There we go. So that's all perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to get my art glitter glue and I'm just going to run a bead of glue. across like that and just glue that shut turn it over and just run your glue the reason I like the art glitter glue is because it dries quickly and it um, just has a bit of tooth to it I guess you could say it grips the paper really quickly and um, it's a very good strong glue and it also dries without a shine so that's always nice although I have heard that it's actually not very good for you it doesn't really have the warning labels on it anymore but I think it's a cancer and reproductive harm, harm. so if you're pregnant do not use this glue <laughs> certainly wouldn't be um, putting it in your mouth like your fingers in your mouth okay all right so yep that's pretty pretty good so we have now got our little mini signature and we've got this so now what I want to do is I want to just place my little so you could you could go ahead right now if you didn't want to be bothered with decorating you could right now put your um, your little pockets in but why not why not make it nice I mean we're using it now I, I'm gonna just um, lay out my patterns first because I just want to see if I've got enough here and I want to make a decision on whether I want to use these or not okay so this one looks like it's a little bit bigger or is it the same size I mean I could that one's a little bit bigger so I could put that like so and then I could put that like so that like so and I could put that like that that like that and that like that which means that perhaps I should take that one and put that one here and then get that one there which means that I need I need one more really don't I or do I do damask damask I'm just thinking sorry ladies and gents because I've noticed there's a few gents that do crafting these days um, hmm Damask Damask how strange would it look if I just used probably probably doesn't really matter does it yeah I'll do that Let's get the file folder and not the tear roller. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. And then, which means that I need. So I've got that one. 
and that one. That one's fine, that one's fine. So I need one more for this, don't I? All right, let's just quickly do that. I do love this deco edge. I don't really cut very much these days. So as I was talking about the weather and I hope everybody's safe and sound, uh, we've had a, a few warm days here and then now we've had a bit of a cool change and it's going to be a cool change ahead in the week. So that's nice. I do prefer this type of weather. I'm not really a fan of hot weather myself. All right, I'm just going to use this as a guide. Then I'm going to get, get myself some more scraps. <laughs> could do with some scraps, to be honest. Okay. And let's... There we go. All right. So that can go like that, and that can go like that. That can go like that. And now all we need, I believe, is this. Um, now the reason I'm putting brown on brown, or should I put, maybe I should put that pattern. Why not? Um, I, the reason I'm doing another layer like this is because it just gives a little bit of sturdiness. So I'm just um, measuring everything. I'm holding my sheet of paper. Sorry, I'll just make sure I'm in screen. Let's pull, pull this down just a little bit. Okay, so I'm just um, measuring. Now I just want to come inside the fold. So I might just come there. And then the same thing here. I'm just going to just make my mark there. Just come slightly in side the cover so I'm just going to line up my lines on my mat just to make sure I'm guessing maybe they've done that deliberately you can't see what I'm looking at but I think I'm straight all right this is a little bit thicker it's a little bit harder to tear okay so I'll just put that one aside for one second and then there's my mark there so I'll just line myself up on the ruler and um, just make my lines so I think we're straight okay so which is the one I wanted this one so this one is just a little bit too short so we will have to cut again that's straight is that square yeah it's square it's just the way maybe possibly the pattern is it's making me think it's not square. Okay, so I'm just going to measure this one again. So get my pencil. So I'm just going to come in. So if I go like so. Bring that down a little bit. So I'm just going to make my ruler mark here and then I'm going to make my ruler mark here. Okay. So again, I'm just going to line up my piece of paper to one of the lines on my mat just to make sure everything's nice and straight. Okay. And I'm going to rip. So we can use that in another project. And then this is my mark here. So I'm just going to line my edge up. And now I'm just going to make sure my ruler is as straight as it can be. And I'm guessing it's this one here. So now I've got this one. So I'm just going to do it like this that one and that one 
Okay, so, all right, so now we can start gluing. Uh, all right. So today, actually, okay, so I've got this little part-time job that I work two days a week. I work for myself and then two, two mornings a week, I've got this little job down the road and um, I love it because it's really easy work and um, it's ten, literally 10 minutes down the road and it's just a really nice atmosphere the people i work with are really lovely so it's just like a lovely lovely little job so i know that's just quite not quite straight so my boss he is um he's a jewish man he's a very clever man and he's also um, a very very good operator very shrewd i find they are, generally are very good operators and um anyway he's very good to us as as a boss he's very very good to his staff which i think is a really good thing to be be in business these days because then you know we want to work for him and you know we we care about him and his family because he's so good to us so he has brought in these bigels now my partner Mike is from East London and when I told him that we sometimes get these bagels brought into or bagels brought into us because that's what everyone calls them bagels he has been my, my partner he says oh no they're not bagels they're bagels that's the print, correct pronunciation so my boss one Friday because I normally don't work on a Friday but this particular Friday I did I work I went in and I worked on the Friday I think it was because we had this you know extra long weekend with the Queen's holiday so I just went in to make up some hours because I had there was a bit of work that needed to be done and every Friday he brings in these bagels <laughs> from this um, uh, bakery so oh, that was so nice and he brought us in like half a dozen each and i brought them home and mike absolutely loved them and he said oh my goodness he said these are like um there's a patisserie in east london which is run by a jewish baker and these are, are the same they remind me of that so i go out to the area where this particular patisserie is and um, I go there once every three weeks. So I called in there and I ordered all these. I call them bagels now because Mike is insistent that that's what they are. And they're not American, they're Jewish, which means that bagel is apparently the correct pronunciation. So if you, do, if you have a differing opinion... I would like to hear that because at the moment Mike is insistent and he is winning the argument so we have to call these now what I'm doing now is I'm um, now starting to glue all my other base pieces down so I ordered these um, bagels and I ordered heaps I ordered like I got a dozen of the plain and then I got um, a variety of the other flavors so there is like an onion one and there's a cinnamon and raisin one and then there was this one that had like all these seeds but it also had like I think it was basil on the top and they were really delicious and I went and got smoked salmon and cream cheese and then I got um, capers so we've been eating bagels the last few days for um, breakfast and lunch and so this morning we thought we would try the cinnamon and the raisin ones and doesn't that sound lovely and by the way they were 
Um, so I went to get my toaster out and my toaster just stopped working. Like, I don't know why. I thought I hadn't, like it had been unplugged, um, but it hadn't and it just wouldn't work. So Mike had a look at it. We went and made sure that nothing got tripped. Um, anyway, yeah, so my, my toaster stopped working. Now what I do is I just, um, like up by eye, I just try and glue in slightly the same position. Probably doesn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, if I can, I try and match them up. But that one piece is a little bit bigger, so that's not going to be possible. Uh, yeah, so um, down we went to Kitchen Warehouse and we bought a new toaster and a new kettle. But I also bought myself a coffee grinder machine because I bought these... Um, you know what I'm going to use these off? Use these for? I mean, look, it, I might be stating the obvious, but I'm going to use these as belly bands when I do this. That's, as I said, I'm probably stating the obvious, but um, I thought it was a good way of using these up. So I'm just going to stick that in my little projects to do up there. Okay, yeah, so um, what was I saying? We, yeah, I got a coffee grinder uh, because I ordered these coffee beans oh, probably about three months ago, maybe two months ago, and they were all like um, pesticide free and organic and, you know, like you didn't, you know, have to worry about any of that sort of nonsense in your because apparently um, coffee beans are the worst for pesticides. So I ordered these coffee beans and of course not thinking, they came, this big two kilo bag and they were whole coffee beans. So I didn't know what to do with them because I didn't own a coffee grinder. Because normally when I get my coffee beans, I buy them already ground, ready for my machine. Which I've got one of those... Um, drip type machines I think it's like a Breville and uh, it's really good I like it so uh, you know we were looking at all the appliances and then I saw this coffee grinder machine so got that as well so yeah I wasn't expecting to be doing that today but I'm glad I got this video in because I've been wanting to do a video for a while because of the Queen's holiday and just a few things going on. I missed a, a few days of uploading. I've actually got videos ready to release, but they're just all kind of haul videos. And I just didn't want to keep just doing haul video after haul video because I thought, oh, that would be a bit boring. You'll think all I do is shop. <laughs> and here I am telling you I just bought a coffee machine and a... Um, a coffee grinder and new kettle and uh, toaster and the funny thing is is that I was going to I was saying to Mike should we get a new kettle because you know our kitchen is small and we've got a lot of appliances on the on. <laughs> okay so my video stopped so apparently this has taken longer than what I thought this was going to take um, but yeah uh, so but Mike wasn't for it. I was. I wanted to get a kettle um, that we could put on our gas hot plate so that, you know, try and clear up a little bit of counter space, but he wasn't really for it. And I was going to um, see if my son wanted um, my kettle and I, I was thinking I would get a new toaster as well to match the kettle. And um, just as well I didn't ask him because it just would have broken down and he just would have thought I was just passing off dodgy um, appliances to him <laughs> which was not the case at all so um, yeah new but you know we've had that t that toaster in that kettle for a few years now so I guess that's just what happens they just sort of kind of conk out after a few years whoops Alrighty, we're almost there. Mm. 
Now, if I was making these to sell, I would probably um, put a, a base down. But maybe not actually. They they look alright. I would I would definitely pay a bit more attention to how I'm covering the base down but because it's for me it's okay by the time you put all your little fussy cut bits you're not even going to notice anyway but you know you can make this out of probably stuff that you've got at home or even if you had to get envelopes um, you know it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to get all the materials and supplies that you need okay so now as i said i am going to be stitching the edges so that's why i'm now i might cut that down I think these are fabric scissors so I'll use different scissors i've got so many scissors i don't know if i really need this many scissors Okay. Alright. Alright. Nearly there. I'm going to be a bit careful with the glue on this one because it's a bit smaller so it's probably not going to get caught up in the stitching. But having said that, we are going to... Um, come around and zigzag stitch so eventually they all are going to get caught in stitching of some sort or another all right so I might just uh, make another belly band template base whatever you want to call it So we've got this now. So we've got all of our layers covered. It's a little bit crooked. So maybe do a little bit better job. No, not going to get that up. All right, I'm just going to glue. Ah, oh, there we go. You do have to remember put your little needles in don't you because otherwise they tend to dry up all right and I found this and I don't know what this is whether this is art glitter glue or whether it's it's like PVA glue that's been a bit watered down I don't remember all right so now that we've done this it's actually quite sturdy because you've got a layer of paper and then you've got your paper bag and then you've got another layer of paper and this one's a little bit thicker than just paper it's a very very light cardboard so it's actually quite a lovely solid little booklet so we've got that 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 and that and that so I have not bothered um, inking any edges, but if you wanted to ink some edges, you could go right ahead and do that. So now we're going to get our little pockets in. So I'm just going to take a few strips here to work with. This one I'm going to put over here and stamp on that. Ah. Okay, and um, this is our little piece that I was working from and it's worked out a little bit bigger because I put that border but if I had have stuck it to this size it would have, it would be exactly the same size so that's what I must have done I must have cut the paper bag right down to that okay but we're on track all right so I've got another piece a full sheet here and let's see what else we've got so we finished with all of these 
So I can put these aside now. Oh, here we go. It's a lovely piece there. Okay. Now, what I do is um, I find it quite handy to have a pocket like that on the inside and then a pocket like that on the back. And the reason I like that is because you can see here, some, sometimes you'll just get these taller pieces so I like to stick them in like so. So now I don't mind having a deckled edge, but if you wanted to cut it straight, then I would, you know, you can cut it straight. But what I will do is I will be very consistent now with where I start and where I finish and the reason I say that is because I'm going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to zigzag around so I'm going to cut my piece or tear my piece to match to match that and then what I do is I take my art glitter glue but you could use double-sided tape if you wanted to and I very very lightly run my glue on the edge like I don't even worry so much about getting a continuous line because I am going to um, I did come off a little bit there I try and and, and um, do it on the very very edge because I want as much space as I can possibly get to tuck, you know, to, to slide my little pieces in. So I'm just going to just very carefully line it up and just run my finger down there. like so but we're going to be stitching over this so it doesn't matter too much um, you're not worried at this point in time about getting that securely down just enough to hold it now of course if you're not going to sew then that would be a different scenario you would want to um, make sure that you've got that glued down pretty well so again, I'm just going to run my art glitter glue just on the edge because it's got a fine tip. And like I said, because it's quite a good grip on it and it dries very quickly, that's why I like to use it. And it doesn't leave that shine, which, you know, some of those other glues can. My voice is a bit creaky today. <clears throat> okay so that's that one down okay what you can do is you can take your ruler and you can just um, test it and just make sure that you haven't accidentally glued any little bits down that was a tip I saw many years ago when I first started junk journaling from one of the YouTubers, which I thought was a really good idea. Okay, so now on this one here, um, and I guess you want to think about what you're going to be storing inside of your ephemera holder. So for me, I'm going to be doing my labels. So if I perhaps tip my labels out that I've already cut, And you can see that there are some larger labels. So I probably would want my larger labels, you know, like you've got this one here. And um, 
yeah so I would probably go um, that would be a good size because you can slip it in and what I tend to use as well is I use tweezers now to take them out and and I'll tell you why because if I can find it because I made this one a couple of years ago from Bohemian Craft Crafter and I followed one of her tutorials and it's a brilliant um, tutorial and a very solid solid piece this isn't the one I made two this one's not too bad um, but the other one that I made like you can see here I've reinforced it with some washi tape and if you look carefully you'll see that there's a tear there and that's I think my own heavy-handedness because I was just putting in things in there and overstuffing the pockets and putting tiny little things in oh, here's the other one so I made two but what I've done is I've torn off the um, the acetate because I'm all the um, vellum or tracing paper that I used because I'm going to re redo this because I actually like it and I thought it would be ideal for some of my larger digi kits um, like for example um, uh, Roxy you know Roxy Roxy creations Sarah she's got these um, doilies that I've purchased a couple of her kits so they're a little bit larger size and I thought they would be quite good to store in here and I need to fix this little um, holder which I don't think I think I just would need to punch out another circle and then just glue yeah big dob of glue in the middle there and then I can just um, reuse that so I think it was completely my own fault I was just too heavy-handed on things so I would um, probably go for this size getting back to this but then you've got these like really little ones really tiny ones so for those I would probably go um, like you know you want to put you want to put it down and then you want to have enough room that it sticks up top I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here but you know you want to have it so that it slides down in fact I'd probably even come down a little bit more and um, you'd, you'd want it about that thin so you would only want it I get my ruler you would only want this well if you're in inches you probably want this three quarters of an inch and if you're in centimeters you would want that I'd probably go two centimeters so that's what we're going to do I'm just going to just um, tear that like so and I, I would probably only do one strip because there's not that many little ones that would warrant probably doing two although you could so I'm just going to figure out my my little strips so I'm gonna do that one like that one that one like that there and um, yeah I'd probably do the same again So I think what I'll do is I will now just pause the camera because this is going to take me a little minute to do and I will get all my pieces laid out and ready to go and um, I'll glue them down because I don't think you need to watch me do that 
and uh, we'll pick this up again in in a little bit okay I just wanted to show you my progress so far so I have um, just cut out my pieces for every single side of this ephemera file folder and you can see that I have um, if I hold this up a bit closer to the camera you can see that I have lined up my pieces reasonably well so I am more concerned about lining up the bottom and like the sides now this bear in mind that this is if you want to sew the edges because if you turn over I have allowed oh, hold on a second I just noticed something I wonder whether yes that's the right way I had I, I must have inadvertently flipped that the wrong way um, because the reason being is that I had and I just want to crease that because I've just noticed that it's um, creasing down with a little wrinkle in it and I don't want that there we go that's better now the reason being is that uh, as again uh, uh, I say this again if you want to sew the edges and I like to sew the edges because I think it's just that little bit of extra reinforcement plus it looks nice so what you want to do is make sure that as you zigzag around you're catching the sides and the bottom of what's on the other side so I have been very carefully lining up my, my edges and my sides I'm not so worried about um, the height because we're not going to sew that top bit we're leaving that open so just because um, that one there is slightly taller than that one there doesn't matter what matters is the fact that on the other side um, the ed edges and the bottom of the po the little pocket is the same so what I found was that if I opened it out like this I could easily line it up if you were doing it by eye uh, but also what I did was I measured I knew that when I put my bottom piece down to flush it against the bottom there and pretty much you know I, I could tell by eye how much I was leaving space on the edge there but when it came to this and this I, I was measuring so this was around about I work in centimeters and millimeters so this was around about 4.2 and then I came down here and this was around about 10.7 <clears throat> but as I was doing it I realized that if I flipped it open like that I could line it up that way as well um, but then once you get going you can do that but in the beginning you won't have that so I'm just doing the last one here so I can just flip it open like that and I can um, now line it up but as I said I was just wanting to show that just that little point out those little bits there to you uh, and as, as I say this is if you're sewing so if I just flush that there like so then I'm getting the same as the other side and just run my glue quickly across and again just looking having a quick look what's on the other side so if I flush it against the edge I'm going to pretty much line that up so yep I think I'll be right there and then I'll just put that final piece in So as I say, these ones here, these top ones, I'm making them smaller, um, but you know they're, they're slightly different, um, 
slightly different as in like tallness but that doesn't matter because you know it's just for the smaller little labels that's all I'm concerned about okay so now I have got all my and this is becoming a really really solid piece like these are very sturdy very very sturdy wouldn't say they're thick like thick thick cardboard like chipboard but they are definitely nice and sturdy and they flick nice and flat like so all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my sewing machine down and I'm just trying to think I think this one here if I take this I think I'm going to sew a nice straight stitch. Yep, yeah, I'm going to st stitch there and stitch there and stitch there. And then I'm going to, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into start here and I'm going to stitch across here. I'm going to come down, stitch across here, stitch here, stitch here. So I'm going to follow my line of my damask paper so i'm just going to get my sewing machine down um now i'm going to do this off camera uh and then i will come back and show you once i've done that okay so i have stitched around and i've done that on that side as well so that's all stitched in so now what i'm going to do is I'm going to stitch these so I'm going to take these apart and I'm going to put this in the sewing machine and I'm going to I'm just trying to think how is the best way to do this I'm going to start here and I'm going to zigzag and I'm going to zigzag 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 and then I'm going to zigzag 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 and then I'm just going to zigzag 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 and that will catch both sides and then I will do the same on this one as well so I will come back when that's all done okay so for this next um, bit I just changed the camera angle to hopefully capture under my sewing machine um, so I finished zigzagging around and I've just got this little bit and it's just a little tip to save some of your thread because I'm using um, the Goodman gold thread which is you know a bit pricey so I don't want those big long bits of string so um, I'm doing my zigzag so I will change that and I'm slightly making my zigzag wider and I'm slightly making my length um, a bit wider so just on my machine I just touch the dials just by a couple of presses um, so I come in and uh, I'm zigzagging and I do a little bit of back stitch but I come across and I do apologize for the noise but um, I come across and then I just do a little bit of back stitch okay now why the needle is up pardon my hand there I um, just scoot it across and line it up on the other side and bring my needle down oops sorry bump the camera there and then I'll finish off my zigzag a little bit of that stitch so I just wanted to show you that just so that you can um, save as much thread as you can I mean of course if it's just a cheap thread you probably wouldn't be so worried but um, you can just see there hopefully let me you can just see I've jumped across so I, I don't even have to worry about snipping that okay so the next bit I want to show you is uh, I've I've done all my my inserts now, so I'm just going to now change my stitch to straight stitch. Now what I do, and um, the camera angle hopefully will show this, I line up my 
my pamphlet. Let me just move my machine back just for one second and I'll see if I can show you. There you go. So I, I layer my insert. So I've got my cover. Let's make sure that it's all the right way around. And then I put my, let's get this all in the right order. So I think that was the front. Yep. So let me just trim a little bit of cotton there. Okay, so I've got it all in the right order. Now what I do is I line my two inserts up and then I, now you could secure this down with a clamp and I think I will do that just for the purposes of demoing. I normally will just um, hold it under the sewing machine and I haven't had a problem so if you're a confident sewer you don't have to really probably worry too much about clamping this down but I suppose it doesn't hurt to make sure everything is all lined up okay. and I'll just do the bottom one okay so I've got my little pamphlet all clipped in and it's all straight so if I just bring my sewing machine back into frame again what I do is I I kind of um, so I obviously I clamp down my I clamp down my um, my zip my foot and obviously I'm looking at the crease line here and um, I start at the top and I put my needle down right so now I've got my needle in my paper so that's all fairly secure okay so I get my foot on the pedal and as I come forward with my sewing I slightly hold my my little booklet up like this just to keep it straight and I want to obviously sew on the spine and I find that works I might just do a little bit of a back stitch so I just come down and I hold it like that just to guide it in that little channel there and hopefully we'll get fairly close just do a bit of back stitch there there we go I hope I demoed that <laughs> well enough for you to understand what I was saying so I'll just snip my thread all right and there it is all right so here we have our finished product I think we're done so I've got my front cover there and if you open it up you'll see that I've got my little pocket on the side there and I've got my my spaces here to put my labels I like the deckled edge I like that sort of rustic look but um, you know you can certainly cut it all uniform if you like and want to go for that neater look and there we have it there and you'll see that because I've zigzagged and I lined everything up it's um, perfectly zigzagged across on the other side as well and I think that's really pretty just seeing the flowers and the little butterfly there but I know once the labels are in you won't sort of see it but you get a little peek of it I like it so here we go guys that's my spin on how to do an ephemera file holder for all our little bits of ephemera pieces uh, if you liked the video give me a thumbs up and love to hear your comments and your thoughts down below if you've got any um, ideas or any hints that you would like to add that would be great um, but um, yeah if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and hit that notific notification bell button so that you will be notified when I do some more videos so I think that's it guys I am going to call it a video and I will see you in the next one bye